Hey guys, this is Mainag and today we'll do time history analysis using CEP 2000. So let's get started. So first of all, a brief, you know, introduction about your time history analysis. So time history analysis provides linear or non-linear evolution of dynamic structural response under loading, which may vary under the specified time function. So specified time function may be sinusoidal, cosine, or it may be according to a, you know, predefined earthquake like uh, the earthquake which uh, occurred in Turkey recently, or the earthquake which occurred in the past. So all these data we can use and we can study the response of the model. So getting back to the software part, we'll do linear uh, time history analysis now. Okay. So now first thing you need to check is you need to ensure that the modeling and the analysis of the structure is complete. So once you do that, okay. So in our model, as you've seen previous modeling uh, has been complete, analysis has been complete. So this step is done and they ensure that the seismic mass source is provided. So if you don't know, uh, if you haven't seen my previous video, then I'll tell you, but if you have, then you already know uh, how to define the seismic mass source. So we can see uh, we have added dead load and we have added a percentage of the live load, okay? So this is the seismic mass source defined. Now, uh, after the third step is the defined model case. So uh, we need to define in the model case and uh, in this set of software, so we can go to define and I uh, can go to uh, load cases and here you can just click on modify this and can do it. So here we know that uh, the number of floors, each has three degree of freedom. So number of floors into, you know, three will give the number of modes, but here I'll give 12. Uh, for lesser number of floors, you can give 12. Okay, for uh, higher number of floors, you can multiply. So, for example, there are uh, five number of floors. You can give five into three, that is 15. Okay? So, you can give it here like this. So, these steps are uh, ensured here. Okay. And then uh, the fourth step is the define the time history function. Okay. So, we need to define the time history function. Okay. So, for that, you just simply go to define and go to functions. So, up to this step, the response vector on time history is the same. So only in this step, the response vector of time history varies. So earlier steps are the same. So we'll go to simply time history and we'll define. So you can see there are various options. We can have the previous predefined option, but we'll, we'll choose the earthquake data. Okay. So we'll choose the option form file and click on add new function. And we'll name this uh, time history one. Okay. We'll name this time history one and we'll choose the file. So uh, here in SAP 2000, we have already some uh, downloaded earthquake uh, functions. So in, in the SAP 2000 folder, just go here and see which which of the earthquake you want to choose. Choose any earthquake here and click on open. Okay. So now there are some things which you need to check. So for that, number of points per line. So you need to view the file and you can see number of points per line. So it is 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, Five, six, seven, eight. Actually, in a single line, that is eight number of points, and uh, you know two or four lines we can ignore. Okay, so here number of points will be eight, and number of lines to skip is uh, four. Let's say, and then uh, values at equal intervals of this you need to check. So this is this should be written here. So you can see values uh, of equal three three zero nine at. 0 0.10. So you need to write down this data in somewhere, okay, so that it will be useful later. So you know where it will be useful. You need to write down this data, okay. Now we can close this and just simply for 0 0.01, okay. This is the equal interval of steps. You can just display the graph. You can see the graph has been changed. Now we can click on OK. So again, click on OK, otherwise it won't be saved. You click on cancel, it won't be saved. So you need to check that. This is the first step of defining the time history functions, as you can see here. Uh, and then the next step is go to define load cases and add new load case. So go to define and go to load cases and click on uh, add new load case. So when you click on here, I'll just go time story and then we'll just select from here time history and then select the acceleration you want and select the function time history one and scale factor. This is also very important. Okay. Scale factor or uh, the time history function, which we had opened uh, earlier, it was given in centimeter per second per second. Okay. So I'll just show you uh, before doing this. I'll just show you. Okay. Let's cancel this because this should be important. I should show you. So define uh, 
go to define functions, time, so not response spectrum, time history, define functions, time history function, and I'll just modify this. Okay, you can see so that it's just to show you the view file. So you can see the unit is at uh, what is the unit 0 0.01 centimeter per second, but we are doing in meter per second. So to convert this uh, 0 0.01, so the centimeter per second to meter per second, it will be multiplied by 0. 0 0.01 or 1 by 100. So that's the conversion ratio. Okay. So that for that only I open this. So this, now you can close this and I will go back to define, define load cases and uh, add new load case. Again, I'll have to write because that was in save time history. Okay. Time history. And uh, then we go time to select the time history here again. And then we have acceleration E1 and then time history one scale factor 0 0.001 and click on add and then the other direction you to also add this so we're doing linear analysis and number of output we had to told you that from the file we have to uh, write it down somewhere so it was 3309 and the default step size was 0 0.01 so damping ratio is kept constant at five percent it's okay then just click on okay and remember to click on okay here otherwise the changes will not be saved so we have defined the time history functions and I'll, uh, if you have any load combinations, I'll just, uh, you know, just delete those load combination here. Uh, these are not required, delete from now, okay, because we're not considering that now. Okay, you can add also, I'm just deleting the load combination. And then we go to, click on, uh, so you can save the file for the progress made, and then you go to analysis and run analysis. So here, uh, obviously the earthquake load will not run here, because we're already considering the time history, which is a form of earthquake. And uh, you can also not consider the live load also, but I'm taking the live load, dead load, live load, I'm taking and the model load. Compulsory things, you need to take the self weight, that is the dead load, which is here, and the model load you need to take. Other things are optional and depending upon uh, what results you want, okay? So then I'll just click on run now. So it will run the analysis depending on the model size, it will take some time. Okay, so one warning will come. That is the, uh, there are some values which are, uh, you know, non-zero values, which you've taken the time history file, they will be ignored. So you know uh, what is in that, okay? So click on okay. So now we'll see the output results. So let's see whether the output results we can see, here. okay? So um, here, first thing, let's go and click on undeformed shape. And uh, first thing which you want, you can want to see the deformed shape due to time history. Time history and and then we want to see relative acceleration, say relative displacement, absolute displacement. Let's see absolute displacement. And time, you can see at any any point. So if you do 50 here and click on apply, it comes back at 33.09. So it means the time starts from zero and maximum is 33.09. Okay, so we know that. Now we can use this to get any data. For example, you want uh, the absolute displacement or the relative displacement at uh, uh, five seconds. You can see that five seconds like this so if you want uh, animation also you can also have that okay uh, suppose you want relative displacement at multiple steps 0 to 32 and 1 and click on apply and click on okay okay and click on start animation and you can see the animation here like this if, we, if i reduce the step size then it will also be uh, smoother okay so like this you can do okay stop animation so these are relative displacement or other things which you can see here uh, from the deformed shape. You can see acceleration, velocity, displacement, all these things you can see. So these things you can uh, see from here. And then, then you can go to display and display, go to show plot function. So you can see the show plot functions. But for uh, before that, I'll just show you one thing. If you right click on any, uh, any point, so first of all, I'll do undeformed shape. To right click on any point, it will give you the label. So it is the point number. So 16 is the point number uh, level of this this point. So we'll go to display, display show plot functions here, and uh, we'll go define plot functions. Okay, load functions. Let's click on. Let's get a join displacement. Okay, join displacement at float function. Now we'll give the ID 16. So 16 displacement in ux direction so you can do velocity acceleration direction everything you can do so suppose in ux direction click on okay and uh, click on okay here so join 16 displacement here and click on display so you can see the displacement function here join 16 displacement 
you can see it here. So like this, you can do for other uh, criteria like acceleration and for other joints, you can see it here. Okay, so like this, you can use this. And obviously you can see the shear force and bending moment uh, or, and the joint reaction. Suppose you want to joint reactions to the time history tabulated at any any amount of time, so maximum is 32. So suppose we wanted, let's say 20, you can just see yeah, the values here. And uh, you can click on undeformed shape. And then if you want the shear force and the bending moments, so frames and time history, shear 3, 3, apply, shear 2, 2, moment, Three. So you can see the shear force and bending moment diagram here also. Just click on the show and deform shape. And in this one, uh, we can suppose you want to uh, click a create a video. So you can create a video for 3D or you know, even for the uh, elevation view. So let's create for the elevation view the 3D. So click select the elevation view and go to file and click on create video, create multi-step animation video, and just save this file. And here, time history function is selected, start time, end time, time increment, just do time increment 0.5, uh, let's say, to just in, uh, make this lesser, you can see, this is the video, okay. And if you want uh, the video in uh, the 3D mode, you can also just select the 3D, click on file, and click on create video, create multi-step video, and we'll do instead of 0.5, we'll do like 0.2 and click on OK. So you can see this is the video. So you can save the video also and view for later. Click on full frame and compressed. You can just click on this. So like this, you can do time history analysis and see the various options and various, various results in SAP 2000. So if you like the video, make sure to subscribe and hit the like button. It really helps me. Thank you. Keep learning. Bye-bye.